Hey, hi, how are you? You know, the original title for this video was, is, and it still is, uh, safety is also managing difficult behaviors and overcoming challenging obstacles. But really and truthfully, the working title is, uh, safety is stuck between a rock and a hard place. And really and truthfully, we are. Um, I've had a few recent comments. One I want to talk about first off uh, that occurred three weeks ago, and it was actually um, hidden because of the content. And But what I've done is I've um, just blurred out some of the uh, more offensive content, and I'm not about censorship, not at all, not at all. It's just honestly, uh, the channel's about safety and safety only. It's not about anything else. And so, and I abhor censorship. I, I dislike it entirely. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, you have the right to free speech. I don't have to like it, but it's your right. However, there's others on the channel that I have to consider as well as uh, advertisers talk about that a bit more in a sec. And then I had another comment that was rather uplifting. So I want to talk about the two of them and how they contrast and uh, just talk about some of the challenges we have as safety. So um, yeah, let's uh, bring up the comment. And this was sent by a fellow Dave. We'll just call him Dave. And he says, yeah, dude, provoking safety at uh, 620. Now, just in clarification of that, I think he meant this video here. He left it on a comment on this video, but I think he meant this video. Uh, so just as clarity, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, uh, the dude's standing on the forks and not on the edge of the pallet. You don't even know what you're seeing because, well, safety in industry is a, a, a joke with idiots and books and degrees in HSE. Now, fair enough, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but uh, let, let's go on. Uh, 40 years of pulling everything down the road and two no-fault accidents, no bent bumpers, steps, or busted fiberglass except for one big bull elk that ran in front of me at zero dark 30. A uh, military term that means after midnight, but anyway, uh, with real... Practical safety in any capacity, there's no one size fits all. Dave, we're in agreement there. OSHA is filled with bureaucratic idiots with law degrees. I'm Canadian, I can't comment, but any organization has always got a few bad apples, but mostly made up of usually good people. So I'm going to go with that. FMCSA is filled with idiots with law degrees and MBAs. Once again, see my previous statement. Uh, hard hats, yeah, okay, then everyone working in offices needs to be wearing hard hats. Sometimes ceiling tiles fall, but people that work inside in yards may just get hit in the head with nuclear birds. Not sure what that means. As for high-vis vests, stupid. Apparently no one remembers the mass shooters and or snipers. Just friggin' comply or freaking comply. Okay, we'll just pause here for a sec. So, a couple of things like with what Dave said. Uh, aside from the people in organizations, not going to comment. I've met uh, good and bad in lots of different organizations where the authorities have jurisdiction. I uh, not going to comment. However, I still fully believe that the organizations are filled with good people for the majority and they come to work and have good intentions to do the right thing and at the right time. Now, the part about um, hard hats and people working in offices, it's once again, it's with the you wear protection, PPE, when there's the presence of hazards. It's the idea is it's a control for hazards. Now, ceiling tiles falling down, yes, it's been known to happen. Very rarity. But in a construction site with lots of work going on overhead, the chances increase exponentially. Not only that, uh, you know what? Uh, realistically, the damage from a ceiling tile is going to be a lot less than it would be from a falling board, brick, etc. So that's why you wear hard hats. As for high-vis vests, they're to be worn where there's mobile equipment and moving machinery going on. I don't know why we're comparing it to mass shooters. I honestly don't. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, those uh, are those two points. Uh, four weeks ago, I had to take my comfortable hiking shoes off and put steel-toed leather boots on to walk into a warehouse where the floors were sweating. Yeah, good idea. Dave, if you're walking into an area where there's possible harmful uh, or hazards where it may harm your feet, that's where you wear, why you wear steel toe boots. Not only that, a lot of times warehouses require them and when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And then he goes on to say safety is blank. It's just 
blank. Uh, you can stand on the forks of a forklift and be totally safe if you pay attention. A wooden pallet makes a good platform if you pay attention. Safety rails? The brain provides a natural safety tool in the way of self-preservation. So slow down and pay the blank attention to what you're doing your and where you're stepping and what's around you and screw the folks sitting in offices that dictate this rid ridiculous, oops, I missed one. And if a smartphone is more important than your life, then maybe that would leave more air for the rest of us to breathe. Okay, uh, so a few points there. Number one, no, uh, forks on a forklift are not um, any good. A uh, couple of reasons. Number one is you're not in control. The operator is in control. And often with a forklift, there's no visibility, perfect visibility between the person standing on the forks and the operator. And uh, not only that, you have a very small area, large center of gravity, and there's too many things that can affect that center of gravity and cause you to fall. Plus, there's not often adequate handholds, or if you are grabbing something, you're putting your fingers into a pinch point, which also isn't that bright. A wooden pallet is not a good platform. It's not made for that purpose. Railings are important because they, what they do is they help you mount and dismount any working platform. So yes, you need safety rails. You need to keep them from falling, plus mounting and dismounting. Realistically, there's more, and that's the problem. Uh, as safety professionals, we understand the science behind safety, not just the anecdotal feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. There are facts and there is a science behind it. And honestly, a lot of times we're also working to help the organization stay in compliance with the legislation. It's not our opinion. Most safety professionals, I'm going to say about 99% of them, won't work on feelings and won't work on anecdotal information. We'll go with facts. And Dave goes on to say, I do think safety is important, but safety is a big idiotic oxymoron. The government corp and corporations are contributing to that idiocy. You know, like I'm under a crane and for whatever reason, a 10,000 pound lift falls on me. It's all right because I'm wearing a piece of plastic on its, my head. Dave, it's never all right. Never. And besides that, I'd have to ask, why are you walking under a suspended load? Once again, not a good thing, and the science speaks for itself. So why do office workers not? Ha why don't office workers have to wear hard hats? A piece of plastic from the cover of the lights may break and give a really nasty laceration. Do you see the lunacy? No, I don't. Uh, once again, you're underneath pieces that are engineered to have people underneath them. Cell phones have killed more people on the road than mass shooters have. Absolutely agree. Uh, because your attention is being diverted from something that's potentially hazard, and that's driving at a high speed. So once again, attention should be on the road, not your cell phone. So real life, uh, safety and everything has went to blank. But who knows, maybe we're witnessing natural selection firsthand and uh, too bad, overly educated idiots dictate safety from books and OSHA with no real practical experience. And this is the piece that I want to um, address. Dave, I do have a little bit of practical experience. I spent 15 years in the logging industry, which I wasn't only just a logger. I uh, slashed, bucked, fell, ran equipment. I also was involved in uh, civil construction, road building, uh, constructed uh, subdivisions. Um, not only that, uh, did a lot of mechanical work as well as just part of it. Because when you're a logger, you kind of got to do everything. Uh, from that, I moved to uh, doing renovations and residential construction, installing bay windows, putting on roofs and building, framing, etc., and I also was a safety professional in a lot of different organizations, and I was the safety professional in charge of construction projects, some of them uh, large commercial construction up to and above $30 million. So, Dave, I have a little bit of experience, but it's not up to me to have to prove things to you. It's also not up to every safety professional to prove things to you. That's the problem we're stuck with. We have organizations that we have to validate things to. And often it's not because bosses or managers or supervisors are opposed to safety. A lot of times when they're asking a question, they're just asking a question. They need to know why so they can validate extra expenses. That's just the way it is. But we're busy doing that, but then we're trying to prove our point to preserve people like you who have what seems to be a death wish. And, and that's the honest truth. 
we spend a lot of our time validating on both sides. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And honestly, it gets a little difficult. Now, on the other side of the coin, though, is we get things like this. We're taught where he says safety is a tough job and uh, can easily get overwhelmed quickly. And unfortunately, it's an uphill battle. It's uh, the whole time. It seems like everyone is biased against you from the get-go. Absolutely right. Just stated that. And I've made all the mistakes and taken the time to learn from them. Me too, Todd. And that's why I share a lot on the channel. And to make different mistakes as a result. And absolutely. I don't want to focus on the negatives of safety. You can make a difference. And he's absolutely right. And that's what we set out to do during the day. When we get up in the morning, safety gets us up in the morning. That's what gets us up. That's what gets us out of bed. And I've been asked that question many, many times. What gets you out of the bed in the morning, Kevin? And what gets me out of bed is the opportunity to make a difference, the opportunity to preserve life and limb, the opportunity to make some positive change, and Dave, even influence hopefully, people like you. And I can't tell you that the time and time again, the people who have just decided to go about their own way has been very few. It takes a bit of time because us as safety prof professionals, we're ambassadors for safety. We're diplomats. We have to be empathetic to our co-workers and colleagues. And we have to have the patience to understand that no matter what, when we get hit with a roadblock, what we have to do is back up, take a good look at that roadblock and consider how we're going to overcome it. So now the rest of you, if you're going to go looking for the comment, I'm going to leave it up for a couple more days, but then I'm going to take it down because um, honestly, uh, to tell you the truth, a bit of good news for me, I became monetized in this channel. Now, what's this going to change? Absolutely nothing. I'll still be making safety content. I may be a little more conscious of my logger talk. Yes, I'm prone to foul language, but fortunately I've been able to temper it on this channel. Uh, God willing, I and, and he knows that I try as much as I can to still my tongue and be uh, beneficial. And that's why with what I shared, honestly, there was a lot of material in there that I could have mocked and made fun of the poster. But that's not what it's about. It's about doing what you can to sway the mindset, change the course of um, intolerable actions and hopefully make a difference in people's lives. That's why we set out to do what we do. So anyway, um, you'll likely be seeing this video maybe around Sunday, uh, depending on how much editing. I don't think I'm going to have to do much uh, because that's what it's about. I, I don't want to have to do much editing. I'm going to entitle this section, this podcast video cast, uh, Speaking of Safety. I've done a few videos on it in the past and so what I want to do is just raise it up and every two to three weeks, hopefully just talk about uh, the state of safety and where it is and attitudes and how we overcome them. Just general stuff versus the actual teaching, training and education that I've been trying to do on the channel. Just gives me that opportunity for the extra bit of creative outlook and hopefully a catharsis. So anyway, do me a favor. It's about leadership. It's about safety leadership. We can be um, leaders without having to be a manager, a supervisor, or anything. All we got to do is set a right example. We got to walk the walk, talk the talk, and provoke safety wherever we are. Okay? So anyway, take care. Bye for now.